the very worst thing that could happen to you is that you fail to look like your picture. When God saved you, he gave you a new look. Not so much physically, but a look, a different walk. And we're going to be looking at several walks. A worthy walk, a love walk, a light walk. a wisdom walk, a spirit fear walk, spiritual warfare walk. We're going to try to cover all those and see if we can't begin to look like our picture that God calls us to be. So I want to come back to Romans and then we'll move to Ephesians. But let's begin with the word of prayer. Father, nothing should start without you. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Father, you are the one that created eternity and you sandwiched time in the middle and then you completed the other side of eternity. Eternity past and eternity future and eternity presence. And then you put us in that eternal move you made. Now, Father, give us understanding. Help us to understand where we are and what we need to do next. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I think we will pick up again at Romans chapter 8 and verse 30. Listen to what God says. He says, And these whom he predestinated, he also called. And these whom he called, he also justified. And these whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? God is developing you to look like Jesus Christ in our character and in our behavior, in our attitudes, and in our emotions to look just like Jesus Christ. There's a story told by E.K. Bailey, um, the late E.K. Bailey. He talked about him being invited to do a revival in another city. And he showed up at the right airport at the right time. And someone was supposed to pick him up He's sitting in the airport and he see an individual pass by him two or three times staring at him. So he got up and went over there to him and said, are you looking for me? And he said, if you are E.K. Bailey, he said, I am he. He said, they gave me a picture of you and you don't look nothing like your picture. I wonder if heaven came looking for us, would we get that same indictment that we do not look nothing like our picture? Well, God is formally aiding a picture, and that's why I come to um, Romans chapter 8 and verse 30. And, and this reaches all the way into eternity past and moves us all the way through 
through eternity future. He moves us from justification in the sanctification and in the glorification. In justification, it's a one-time act. It's a event. The moment that you accepted Christ as your personal Savior, then you were justified. One time, something happened to you for all of time, and might as well say all of eternity, you will completely change forever. And that was justification. Let me skip over glorification. Uh, go. Let me skip over sanctification and go to glorification. In glorification, it's gonna happen one time. That's when you get your glorified body to match your glorified soul. We call that the rapture. Uh, we call that the resurrection. That one time, and. It's done. But that's not the challenge. The challenge is what's happening between justification and glorification? What's happening is sanctification, where you grow from spiritual infancy to spiritual maturity. It's where you got this constant process of pulling off and putting on. And that's what we want to talk about. Talking about what is it that I pull off and what is it that I pull on. Let me hook it up like this. This is what you pull off. and Because I'm going to spend all my time on what you put on. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 17, Paul says, So this I say and affirm together with the Lord that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles also walk in the fertility of their mind. Walk means live. Verse 18, being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them because of the hardness of their hearts. And they have become callous and having given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. But you did not learn Christ in this way. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught in him, just as truth is in Jesus that in reference to your former manner of life, you laid aside the old self which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God, has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth." Wow, what if I told you that that was the goal in the beginning when God called you out of darkness into his marvelous light? What if I tell you that in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4, he said, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him in love. Did you catch it? Holy, blameless. Holy, blameless. That's between justification and glorification. That is our sanctification. That we, you and I, would be holy and blameless. That is where we're going with this being predestinated and and called and 
justified and glorified. That's where we're going. But it calls for a different lifestyle that you could never pull off. Now, I think I'm going to spend the rest of my time right here. It's no way you could pull this off. When we look at people like Joe, like uh, Joseph and David and Job, and we say, how did they pull that off? It was God. They had to have a God in their life. Joseph couldn't have become the premier of Egypt if God was not in his life. David never could have been a righteous king entering into a righteous covenant if it had not been for God living in his life. And then we talk about Job. Job was upright, blameless, reverencing, turned away from evil. How are you going to do all of that? It takes a God in your life. And we have God. If you've been justified, now Christ is in you. We have a God in our life. And so our picture has got to be what God wants us to be. And so now that becomes a process. Oh, wow. I wish I could convince you how helpless we are without the Spirit. Maybe I can do it this way. What part did you play when you were physically born from your mother's womb into time? What part did you play? Did you go ahead and send an email ahead of time to say, uh, this is what I want to be, this is my career, this is where I want to go to school? You had no part at all in your first birth. Mm. And we think we had a part in our second birth. And you may play a little small role, but when you even look into that role, you've got, uh, you receiving faith. And that's not of yourself, it's a gift of God. Yeah, you could say, well, I did God a favor, I accepted him. No, you could not even have accepted him if it had not been for him. That's the work I'm talking about. You can't do anything without the Holy Spirit. He is the Alpha and Omega. He starts it and he completes it. So, beloved, we got to put a pin right there. But let me just tell you, this God is so awesome. You got to get to know him. Oh, we. It just hit me. I need to. Re I need to at least mention this, and that is. Salvation. Is knowing God. Jesus said in his priestly prayer. He said, "This is eternal life. That they may know you, the true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you've sent." It's in knowing Him, and it's what He does to get you to know him. And that's why we start out loving and praising him. When we get to heaven, we'll still be loving and praising him. Shall we pray? Father, with utmost appreciation and gratitude, we thank you. We thank you for choosing us way back in eternity past and then meeting us in time to bring us into eternity future. 
So, Father, I just want to say thank you. Keep us moving. Make us look like our picture, and we will give you praise and glory. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.